aging is 80 to 90 percent the cause of heart disease, Alzheimer's. If we didn't get old and our bodies stayed youthful, we would not get those diseases. And actually what we're showing in my lab is if you turn the clock back. Biologist and genetics expert Dr. David Sinclair is out to prove he can live past 100 years old. And he thinks you can too. On this episode, Sinclair goes in depth on the process of aging and the techniques you can incorporate into your life that help you live a longer, healthier life. These techniques include optimizing your diet, the benefits of exercise, the role of a positive attitude, the importance of sleep, the three supplements he takes every day, why it's never too late to slow the process of aging, and so much more. Dr. Sinclair is a professor of genetics and co-director of the Paul F. Glenn Center for Biology of Aging Research at Harvard Medical School. He is best known for his research on aging with a focus on epigenetics. So what we do when we exercise and if we skip a meal, what we're doing is inducing this very ancient, very, very ancient, billions of years ancient mechanism that protects our body against decay, disease, uh, and the root causes of aging in an effort to survive. He's been called one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine. And in 2019, he released the New York Times best-selling book, Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. David Sinclair is 53 years old, but according to his biological age, he's 10 years younger. I'm better than a 20-year-old for health. I think a lot of that's due to my new diet that I've adopted because I can just see things getting better and better. Biological age measurements are important because they're based on the body's internal status at the cellular level, which can impact one's overall life expectancy. David Sinclair keeps a relatively strict daily schedule to stay healthy, which includes green matcha tea and polyphenols and a couple of spoonfuls of yogurt in the morning. Matcha tea most mornings, which is the, the very thick, dark green, creamy green tea. ECGC from green tea. This ECGC has great anti-inflammatory, definitely full of leafy greens. Particularly spinach is great because it's got the iron that we need, plenty of vitamins. And an occasional bite of 80% dark chocolate. Still, he says his regimen has helped him stay biologically 10 years younger than his age, underscoring a modern phenomenon called reverse, aging by combating age-related disease and decline. 18 months during the pandemic was to also, as best I can, skip lunch as well. So I go all day without eating with a tiny little bit of yogurt in the morning to dissolve a supplement. But essentially, I'm just here I'm holding a glass of water. I'll have tea, I'll have coffee, that'll keep me full. Um, and I go till dinner, and at dinner I have uh, a reasonable meal. Uh, Taking resveratrol, Sinclair swears by resveratrol, a polyphenol or natural antioxidant commonly found in berries, peanuts, and red wine. The one chemical that I take every day is resveratrol, which is the red wine chemical, and that comes from grapes. So that one gets sprinkled into some yogurt in the morning. NMN is a a version of vitamin B3 that makes a chemical in the body that we need for life, and that's called NAD. And as we get older, we make less and less of this. And without NAD, these sirtuins that we discovered, slow aging, remember the genes that we discovered? Mm -hmm. They don't work without a lot of NAD. So as we get older, our defenses decline. And so by taking this supplement, we know that it doubles the levels of NAD back to when I was age 20. There's now clinical trials that my colleagues at Harvard have done that says that NMN has some health benefits in early studies such as lowering cholesterol and blood pressure. And so I take that one every day as well. He consumes it in a supplement form each morning with a couple of mouthfuls of yogurt. Along with the yogurt, Sinclair has green matcha tea full of polyphenols such as EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate. Research suggests polyphenols' antioxidant properties help strengthen the gut microbiome, decrease the risk of tissue damage, improve mood, and increase heart strength. Sinclair takes the micronutrient as a supplement, which, if taken in high dosages, poses a risk for side effects like nausea and vomiting. Sinclair tells in an interview that he's prioritized his morning polyphenols for roughly 15 years. That found there were at least 20 plant molecules called polyphenols that activate the SIRT2 and enzyme called SIRT1. And when I looked into it, these polyphenols do remarkable things to the body. The one that got the most media attention because it's in red wine is resveratrol, but there's piscitanol and there's physetin and quercetin. These are supplements that people are getting excited about only now. But when you look into it, they activate and inhibit pathways or proteins in the body that are known to be important for health and longevity. So how do we know if a food has been stressed? Well, you can start with the generalization that if they're grown 
uh, out in a field organically without pesticides, probably they're more stressed, right? Skipping breakfast, Sinclair skips breakfast and intermittent fasts by waiting between 16 and 18 hours between large meals. Eat less often. It's not just what you eat, it's also when you eat. And this constant eating three meals a day plus snacks is making us age faster than we need to. I like to eat within a period of about six hours a day. Over time, learned to do is skip meals. I'm not always successful. Sometimes I have breakfast in, in beautiful places, but my goal is to not eat a large meal until dinner. Uh, and then I eat a very healthy vegan meal. That's basically having a very late lunch or large dinner. Although he says starting this regimen younger can be risky, and cautions against malnutrition and starvation, research shows intermittent fasting may lower the risk of diabetes, heart disease, and dementia, many cornerstones of aging. But fasting is not for everyone and can pose a health risk, not to mention trigger those who struggle with eating disorders or disordered eating. Without being too strict, there are also ways to fast that may work for you. Experts recommend starting small, making meals highly nutritious, and staying hydrated. Avoiding sugar, Sinclair started turning down sugar and meat. The big killer is sugar. Glucose, particularly fructose, is also pernicious. And if you give animals lots of glucose, and especially fructose, they will get fatty liver disease, they'll get diabetes. It's really bad. The best predictor of your long-term longevity that we know of is your blood sugar. When you've got high blood sugar, it attaches to a lot of proteins in your body. You become caramelized. Cancer cells, by the way, love sugar. They live on sugar. And that's another reason why you should try to keep it low. Try to avoid too much fruit, berries, particularly fruit juice. Definitely avoid that sugar high. Spiking your sugar is not healthy in the long run. Your body can make its own sugar. Your liver makes sugar. You just need to wait two weeks for it to get used to it. Our liver is pretty lazy, but after two weeks it learns, ah, in the morning I have to make some sugar. And what, what I found is that my liver making sugar is a lot smarter than my eyes and my mouth eating sugar. There's even an order which you can eat your meals to reduce the blood sugar spike. You can put the sugar at the end of the meal. You can quit something, but you don't have to be draconian about it. I still like to steal a, little, you know, a few scoops of ice cream if I see it, but I'm not gonna eat a giant bowl of ice cream every night. Sinclair consumes plant and nut-based meals, including rice, almonds, couscous, crushed cassava, and milk made from nuts. Interestingly, Sinclair has completely eliminated alcohol from his diet. The new research just over the last two years says that drinking alcohol every day is, is really not good for you. So I've cut out alcohol and I've focused on plants. He's also dumped dairy products from his dietary regimen. Since stopping his former red wine and cheese-based diet, he has regained a sharper memory. For example, while on the former diet, he had difficulties remembering phone numbers and key codes. But since eliminating alcohol and cheese, he finds these tasks simple enough. In essence, he says he's been able to recover his 20-year-old brain. Incorporating a healthy exercise routine, Sinclair aims for doing a weightlifting routine three times per week. To exercise three times a week um, and lose my breath. You want to be able to be moving so fast that you cannot carry out a conversation easily. That's when you know you're becoming hypoxic, low in oxygen, and this low oxygen we think is a very good stimulator of this stress on the body and it, your body responds in a positive way to build muscle, get better blood flow, and also your tissues will put out chemicals that slow aging. So really, if you can just lose your breath for 10 minutes, three times a week, that can give remarkable health benefits, lowering the rates of disease by 30%. He also tries to go for a run daily, and if he doesn't have the energy for a run, he'll go for a walk instead. Along those lines, he says that his most significant health-related challenge has become getting himself moving. Sinclair's biggest piece of advice for people wanting to extend their lifespan is to remain consistent with their age-slowing health habits. Uh, so the science of aging and aging reversal has come a long way in the past 20 years. Uh, when I started at Harvard Medical School, it was considered crazy to try and slow down aging, let alone reverse it. Uh, but the science is now at a point where we really do understand what drives aging and also that there's a backup copy of youth in every one of our many trillions of cells. He recommends trying your best to adhere to your longevity promoting plans under whatever circumstances you find yourself in. Also, don't find excuses to splurge or disregard your healthy habits. It's never too early to begin watching your health. According to Sinclair, our epigenetic clocks an age estimation based on DNA molecular tags, DNA methylation, 
start ticking from birth. As such, people in their 20s who think they're impervious to aging and illness are mistaken because what we do during our 20s can modulate our epigenetic clocks to affect our longevity. For this reason, it's never too early to start watching your health and thereby begin to slow the aging clock. According to Sinclair, he started working on slowing his aging clock in his early 30s. To slow his aging, he began skipping breakfast, avoiding sugar, and taking resveratrol, a molecule found in red grapes that has anti-inflammatory and anti-aging properties. Sinclair says that three meals per day plus snacks are just too much. Consuming this much food puts the body in a state of abundance, which turns off longevity genes. Along those lines, people should start incorporating a period of fasting, like skipping breakfast, into their daily routines starting in their 20s. Younger people should avoid this form of fasting to avoid malnutrition or starvation. Sinclair says that going 16 to 18 hours without eating a large meal is important for his diet, which incorporates this form of daily fasting. That's basically having a very late lunch or large dinner. 